It was a cold, dreary night in Atlanta. So cold that the lawyers in the bar had their hands in their own pockets for a change. But that chill in my bones soon turned to fever the moment he walked in the room. I knew I had to have him. He must have come from some kind of sexy soiree, the kind that leaves you hungry, unsatiated, as his fire had been ignited, but not consumed. The telltale sign that was his energetic hard-on was unmistakable. While his root chakra had inflamed to encase his entire business district, it was more his energetic protrusion that convinced me. It was a throbbing, turgid, engorged, sultry rod of pure man energy. I could see it from across the room, but even those who did not have eyes to see became visibly disturbed by any chance contact with this glorious beam. I intuited this was going to be the ride of my life. Perhaps my beams had caused him to notice me as well. But upon catching my eye with just a fleeting glance, I noticed that just like a peacock spreading his tail, this man was about to blow into full sexual regalia. You can tell a lot about a man by his regalia. For one thing, does he cultivate? The perpetual masturbators do not realize that those emperors have no clothes. Well, energetically speaking. They are forced to wander the energetic wasteland devoid of the superhuman gifts of the fully energized male. And gifts they are. <laughs> The first thing I noticed was that the usual blue-white rays from his fingertips turned blood red and grew to about a meter long. Talk about strumming my pain with his fingers, but he may not have even realized that these strong red rays physically increased his gripping strength. All the better to tear off my blouse. But the real secret of these rays, for me anyway, was to avoid them for as long as possible. These rays are simply hypnotic. Just one touch by these rays would render his victim hypnotized. Just like a stare from Brad Pitt's Lestat. You know the type. Just one touch and I would have lost my mind as the tiny white chakras of my erogenous zones blew up. For now, I would just watch and wait. Any woman will tell you that when the usual emission is ejected from between a man's butt cheeks, we tend to run and flee. But this was no usual man and no usual emission. This was nothing short of a shockwave, a burst of purple lightning emitted from the ass cleft of his perfect cheeks and struck right through the core of the physical and energetic bodies of all in the room. This man was not messing around. Within moments, a glorious crown of long red feathers grew from the top of his head and from their tips showered down white sparkles as if he was about to levitate coils of pink red energy about four inches in diameter grew from the soles of his feet and twisted upwards encircling his calves knees and strong sexy thighs almost if he was becoming an energetic gladiator ready to overwhelm his impending prey that i was hoping to be of course Similar coils also emerged from the palms of his hands and twisted upwards towards his strong shoulder muscles, his neck enlarging a little but from within. These coils meant serious business if only to impart a considerable increase in strength. Still, their appearance also reduces the pain threshold of any man adorned with them, and that could come in handy very soon. 
However, these coils also result in hypnotic increases of ecstasy by anyone embraced within them. But be warned, a man at this point in expressing full sexual regalia is not a man to be trifled with. He is not messing around. Yet I could not help myself. I had to see how far this would go. As I darted away, his buttocks became engulfed and a red light rose into a fire rising along his spine. This was not Kundalini, but heat nonetheless. A heat that warmed his growing energetic garden to blossom spiky flowers in a sea of colors emerging around his pectoral nipples. By now, he was glowing as all the collections of white chakras increased in luminance, and it appeared as if he was encased in a gorgeous red and white luster. He glowed as if encased in red silver armor. I was now ready for my night in shining armor, and it was time to make my move. You see, where the female of the species probe male selectively for a mate, Males in full regalia have no active probes as such, and so the probing and selection was up to me. And I was ready, and more than willing, to get my Medusa on. <laughs> Oh, I hope you didn't hate that. That was my attempt at humor. A Mills and Boone version of Chapter 26 of Psychic Sexuality by, of course, the fabulous Ingo. If only we could see it, eh? I think it would be really, really fascinating. But anyway, next week we're going to get a little bit more serious and I'm going to talk about the androgyne from an energetic perspective. And I have to say that it is very, very interesting and revealing, particularly considering the current debates about gender. Thank you for listening, lovelies. And if you like this podcast and would like to support us, please go to MagicalEgypt.com. And I have made a special discount coupon just for you all. And the coupon code is LOVE. And that will get you $30 off any Magical Egypt purchase. Also, um, I've started a Patreon. So you can mosey on over there and uh, see if you want to contribute. But I appreciate you listening and I appreciate all your support. And more soon. Mm-hmm.